Let me give you one skeptic. I think it's uh, from uh, Australia, from uh, Andrew Maynard. Uh, he, well, not skeptic, but he asked a very important point. Is there such a thing as bad innovation? I put that to you. He's sitting out there watching us online in Australia. Mariana. Oh, the example I just gave of lots of financial innovation, which, as we know, has only led to lots more inequality. It actually hasn't, for example, funneled finance towards the productive economy and actually finance the kind of sort of technological and organizational and, and uh, new markets that we would hope that uh, finance would be uh, nurturing, if you want. I would say that is a bad innovation, but that is innovation. No one can deny that it was doing things differently with an interesting state of mind. And I think it's just really important not to get, again, too fuzzy. I mean, I kind of feel like we're talking about kind of love as if you can't, you know, define what love is. Um, you can define what innovation is. And I think we were sort of getting there in the beginning. I mean, doing better things um, at lower cost is, is actually quite a good definition. And the problem is it's extremely hard. So I don't think it's true that anyone can do it. It's extremely difficult and many people, as well as many companies, aren't willing and able to engage with that kind of difficulty. And again, coming back to the finance issue, which is so important because innovation needs to be financed. Uh, Schumpeter, who was one of the big thinkers about innovation, talked about the banker as the E4 of capitalism because of how important you know, finance was. What we know, however, is that there's only particular types of finance that are willing to do this really difficult stuff that you just you know, eloquently said, which sort of has 90% failure rate. Um, and this is, in fact, where the public sector comes in. And it is also, I think, this point that various people raise, which is also very important, that you need to be able to think big, think drift, um, differently. And even at country levels, those countries that have achieved innovation-led growth are very few. I mean, today, these are countries like Singapore, Korea, Brazil, China. For sure, the Silicon Valley model was one area of the US that did that, you know, Denmark and Germany. And these are countries, by the way, where when the government got involved, it wasn't thinking small. It wasn't just trying to fix a little market failure problem and just fund little bits of basic research. They were mission oriented. In the past, this was things like putting a man on the moon or a woman on the moon. Um, in the future, hopefully, it's going to be tackling climate change. But it really requires dreaming up something really big, and it goes beyond just putting a little bit of bandages here and there.